Welcome back to the Law Unscripted, where we talk about everything about the law and the legal process that you never knew. Never understood. And no one ever told you. Today, we are talking about traffic stops. And in particular, we are going to talk about what police are allowed to do during a traffic stop in terms of search and seizure. Fourth Amendment, baby. (laughs) Yep. Go into the Fourth Amendment. Um, This is crazy stuff. People don't understand or know this. And I cannot tell you how many people I have talked with, clients over the years, who are like, they can't can't do this. "Mm, They can. They can. (laughs) They actually can. And it sucks. And I'm really sorry, but they can. So we're going to talk about what exactly are the constitutionally determined rights that the officers have during a traffic stop. Absolutely. So here we go. I'm Virginia Tarani. I am an attorney with Tarani Law LLC because you never need a lawyer. Till you do. I practice in Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, and I am joined um, by our colleague, Chelsea Rogers. Hey, everybody. I'm Chelsea, and I'm a recent law school grad, and I'm so happy to be here. (laughs) So glad to have you back and glad that we're in season two. Um, This is episode two of season two. We're finally back um, after Chelsea has taken the bar, and we're going to talk about one of the bar subjects. Yes. Was this actually tested on the bar for you this summer? So kind of, yes. There was a criminal procedure question, which... Thank God. Nobody predicted it, but I was praying for it and I got it. Um, (laughs) That would have been me too. I mean, truly. But the real call of the question, I think they tried to trip people up because it started with the traffic and then there were other things. But the real call of the question was about Fifth Amendment and Miranda stuff. But I did throw in Fourth Amendment stuff because I knew it so well because we had prepped for it. And I like passionate about lots of Fourth Amendment things. (laughs) But did I throw it in there because I I knew I had the time? Um, to put it at the beginning and address some of the traffic stop things, even though that wasn't really the, the question. Um, yes, I did because, because I could and I had time. Yes. Look, my secure transactions essay was not taking me a full 30 minutes. <laughs> let me tell you. Um, yeah. I build I, points in other places. <laughs> I put like the two things I knew, spent about 12 minutes on that. And the rest of the time, just adding in extra to the, like I was, it was the last essay in my book. So like I was continually adding things to the end of it. <laughs> Well, we can help everyone else here. Um, We do have a lot of law students who watch this and listen to our podcast, which is fantastic. And hopefully it gives you a little bit better refresher or explanation or the aha moment. But even for people who are not attorneys, please stay and listen, because this is truly when you're, how many people are in traffic stops? I was going to say, I feel like so many people drive, so many people have been pulled over, pulled in a traffic stop. I think especially when we see a lot of protest or situations that get sort of a lot of public Mm -hmm. people don't understand the rules surrounding it and you can have whatever opinions you want as long as you know what the rules are right you understand so i think it's good for everyone to have a basic understanding because we do live in a culture in the u.s that like driving is really integral to most people's lives yes um i in law school for a period did not have a car because i like moved to washington dc and thought like i don't need a car i can just use public transportation let me assure you i (laughs) The only times I didn't regret it were trying to park in other situations because I never learned to parallel park. And so (laughs) parking in D.C. was a difficulty. Those are the only times I was grateful to not have my car. I get it. New York, you probably can. Um, Some parts of Boston. Yeah. But otherwise. Yeah, no. Okay. So with the cars, we're going to go back to the fourth amendment itself. Like you said, this is where all of your rights, not the police rights, but the individual rights stem from. And these are rights to against unreasonable searches and seizures. So the In rules. The fourth amendment. I what? was going to say the fourth amendment. I was going to tell you what it says. Oh, do it tell that, me. Yes. No, I know. Okay. So the fourth amendment says that any uh, search or seizure without a warrant is it the default is that it is unreasonable. Correct. That is the default of it. However, since then, <laughs> <laughs> you're leaning in, making sure this is yes. really importantly 
touched and covered. That's how it's supposed to start. They're like, you know, on its face, a warrantless search or seizure is unreasonable. Correct. However, we have now added about a gazillion exceptions to the warrant requirement, which is what that's called, right? We yes. have this warrant requirement, and now there's about a gazillion exceptions. And the one most people are going to deal with is the automobile exception. It is. And the the idea behind the automobile exception. <laughs> the warrant requirement. That is, yeah, right, is there are not many warrants that are required during a traffic stop. No. A traffic stop is one of the few things and the most common thing where warrants are not required to still be considered a reasonable search and seizure. The premise based on old law, but it's still like good law. Wasn't it? What was that? The first couple of cases were like bootleggers, people who were transporting. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. I was like, the <laughs> Yes, they were, you know, 1920 in my car and take off. Like, right? That's <laughs> exactly. We're <laughs> we're transporting alcohol illegally. Right. So they have to find a way to get it. You know, they you don't walk alcohol down the street. You drive it, especially once the automobile became quite um often used. So they had to create some of these rules. The premise of it was that automobiles are so easily and quickly moved right. that we don't have time to go and get a warrant. Which makes or, sense. Right. I mean, you're just going to drive away, right? The idea is- You're the, like, hold on, wait there. Um, okay. I don't have the right to search you yet, but I'm going to go ask the judge um, so that I can get the right. Just stay right there. <laughs> and off like, they go. <laughs> here gone like, yeah I mean why would they stay right. and how many of us think even in these normal traffic stops that we go through now that weren't fully envisioned yeah. of well I'll just leave and sometimes I, you can yeah. but for the I've most I've never thought about that honestly oh I, really am I, mean, I that bad no okay I was gonna say because I feel like I've never felt like I was pulled over unjustly. I think it's maybe the thing. I always am speeding, unfortunately. And every time I've gotten caught, I've been like, you caught me. You got me. <laughs> I guess for me, it's I've had so I, I used to do defense, criminal defense, yeah. and then I did criminal prosecution. And there are so many people who just consent to the search of their cars. Yes. And I always thought. But why? Why would you do that? And I, I guess I've never had an officer actually ask for consent to search my car. Um, oh, okay. But I feel I like I would it. just say, no, no, I'll leave now. Do you need me for anything else? Okay, I'm on my way. I'll tell you one time, because I, <laughs> I really did have a lead foot. And I was like, just, uh, mostly in Georgia when I had my car. Um, I drove a little tiny Kia too. So, I mean, I could make that thing get up there. We were booking it. Um, I'll never forget. One time I got pulled over by state patrol. Had to be like 11 o'clock at night. It was pretty late. I was I was leaving work and I was waitressing. It was late. I actually had my dog in the car too. All of us. And I'm driving this junky little Kia speeding 11 o'clock at night. State patrol. I was so scared. I was so scared. I was like, it was a desolate, like, so I pull over into a Walgreens parking lot where there's light because I'm like, you know. Which I is good. I listen, and I put my hazards on so he knew I was going to pull over. But I was very scared. Um, and he came out guns drawn. Like, I was terrified. Oh, my goodness. Um, and, like, was he was looking all in my back seat, and he saw the dog because that's all that was in my back seat was the dog. And immediately he, like, dropped his gun. But I really thought that man was going to search my car. Like, he had the flashlight. He had his gun. Um yeah. Because I was rolling around my little hoop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he thought it was something more nefarious than a waitress and her dog trying to get home. Right. Um, because, like, why else would you be going as fast as I was going? But That's very funny. Um, so, okay. But that's plain view. So back to what we're talking about. That is plain view. Back, that was not a search by the definition we're talking about in the fourth amendment, he had every right. And if I would have had illicit substances or guns or I don't know, something else, but right. in my backseat. Well, but that's part of it. I love how you described like the flashlight yeah. is you are the other parts of the automobile exception for a warrant requirement yeah. is that 
your car contents are viewable by almost anybody. Yeah. You well, park your car. Back to the very beginning privacy rights. We talk about mm-hmm. the home being the most private. You have an expectation of privacy. That's what, right. like sort of the basis of all of this is. And you have a lessened expectation of privacy. You have clear windows that are driving down a public street. Yeah. You, <laughs> you park anywhere, you drive anywhere, the car beside you can look in, you know, you're driving, you have your, right. your passengers looking into other cars. I'm watching for any dogs like yours in the back seat Cause I want to see the dogs. Okay. But if I can see into your car, then you shouldn't have a complaint for if a police officer pulls you over and they use their flashlight to look in your car. Right. That's public consumption, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. If you're driving it on public highways, yeah. then you are presumed to let anybody see into your car yeah. for the visible areas. And honestly, that's not even so much a an automobile exception is common sense. If you're doing something yeah. in public, then you should not have an interest, a privacy interest in it. Right. Exactly. So they can, if they stop you, they can walk by your car. They can look in your car. They can look at it with a flashlight. They yep. can peer over. Um, <laughs> they can't open your car doors immediately. They're not supposed no. to do that. But they can order you out of the car. Yes. This is one I think people are surprised about. I think most people don't think they can do it, but they absolutely yes. can. Yes. I I even had that assumption before law school and before, you know, a lot of my yeah. criminal law work was, well, you can't pull me out of the car. Right. I'll just sit here. I'll give you my license. I'll give you my registration. Yeah. I'll give you my but insurance card. Out. But why would I get out? But they can. They can absolutely yeah. order you out of the car. Because as we said just a minute ago, the car is movable. Right. It, you can drive it away very easily. You are there under suspicion of committing some type of crime, usually a traffic violation. But they're still crimes, right? right? And my dogs are barking in the background. Oh. Um, so, and the puppies, are, I have one on the couch um, supporting us. Sky's on the couch and then Charlie and Willow are, are upstairs oh. and they're, they're barking a little bit. But don't mind the dogs in the background. Um, so the... <laughs> You're, you're driving around. It is a movable vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's easily and quickly movable. They have a reason to probable cause that you are committing some offense to begin with. Right. So they have a right to detain you to investigate that initial offense. And as a driver, you are likely that they are. Can you hear them? A little bit. Okay. As much as I expected. Good, because the headphones and the the mic, I think, are helping with that. Um, But (laughs) so going back, they they can pull you out to do this Mm -hmm. preliminary investigation and for their safety. Yes. And they can Uh, ask you all kinds of questions. Now, you don't have to necessarily answer all of them. Right. But they will ask you all kinds of things. Where you go in? Where you been? What you up to? Have you you been drinking? Have you been drinking? Do you know how fast you were going? Got Got anything in the car? Yeah. Whose dog is that? This is what they do. (laughs) That's when they get you talking and they're like, do you mind if I take a look? And this is when I think people consent because they've already gone on these conversations. And obviously, like a police technique. They train them how to do this. Oh, yeah. They'll start asking you questions where you're like answering and you kind of get a rapport. They're like, well, let me take a look. And you're like, sure. And you're like, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. All of a sudden you're saying yes. And to what? Wait. I said, right. wait, no, no, I didn't, but they're already in. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so we've, we, yeah, we keep having this is they can pull you out. They can detain yeah. you. So you don't drive away. And frankly, I got to agree with, I don't like it. And it was a surprise to me, yeah. but one of the reasons I can actually get on board with this is officers do get injured at these, the most dangerous part of most officers' jobs is not what we think of as the herring. I'm going to, you know, break down this door and go inside. The day-to-day. It's the traffic stop. The leading killers of police officers are traffic stops and domestic disputes. Right. That's where it's the most dangerous. Um, So it makes sense to me that you can pull somebody out. It makes sense to me on on a highway 
yeah. that they'd rather pull you out and put you on the grass side than yeah. stand with the traffic coming out because yeah. the police officer could get hit by Absolutely. another vehicle or you can drive over them or into right. them. There was, oh my goodness, this year there's that f- freak accident in DC, I think it was, and it, oh. the video went viral of an officer at a traffic stop. And he was even on the correct side for yeah. his safety where he was in the grassy area or on the, the passenger yeah. side. But he had no idea a drunk driver or an, I think it was a drunk driver, oh. but another driver on the other side, opposite Cross side, over. crossed into the opposite lane of travel and hit the car that oh, he was doing no. the traffic stop on. And it was within a second, a millimeter of him getting crushed. And he jumps and you can see it. I thought the guy was going to die. So these are the risks that they're taking. So in some ways, it makes sense that they should be able to pull you out of the car, make sure they're safe during this traffic stop. But then, of course, they're going to pat you down to make sure they're safe, that you don't have a gun or a weapon on you. Right. That's acceptable without a warrant because this is the right. stop and frisk Terry stop yes. that we Can talked I... about on the last podcast. Right. Which to me, again, is I feel like basically everyone I know has committed some traffic violation at some point in their life. Right. Yeah. Um, outside of that, the people that I know have not committed other crimes. They, I mean, I basically everyone <laughs> right. I know, right, like has committed some traffic violation. And to me, it just feels like this way of limiting our protections and rights. And it's like, I understand the reasoning, right? Like, I understand what you're saying, the officer yeah. safety, but it's my good old Georgia libertarian roots. They're like, <laughs> the government. <laughs> like, I just don't. It's the one we're least comfortable with. Because it is more of a common man crime where we don't like to be treated the the normal person, whatever that means, who doesn't commit crimes mostly other than traffic offenses. We don't like to be treated like what we think of as criminal. Right. And I think that there's not a lot of evidence to suggest that people who commit traffic violations are also having a weapon on them or also having other things on them. And so it seems like a way to just get information they would otherwise not have access. Yeah, it is. And that's why, you know, they have to have in order to actually search your car. Yes. They have to have probable cause. And this is where in the fourth amendment, it says you, you know, a warrant shall affect upon probable cause. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is they're they're saying, all right, we're still going to require the probable cause. That's you just don't listed. have to go get a judge's signature now. <laughs> you just don't have to wander down the road and get the signature. You can right. now state or know what your probable cause is and then right. do a search right there on your movable vehicle. Yes. Um, but this is, you can get probable cause by looking in the back seat. Oh, there's drugs. There's guns. Yes. Uh, the odor of drugs. How many cases? Now, marijuana is becoming legal in yes. a lot of states. But when I first started practicing, and for a very long time, it was not legal. So if right. the officer smelled marijuana emanating from the car, that was, that was probable, probable cause. cause. Yep. They could then search your car because they had probable cause that there were illegal drugs in your car. Right. Um, now, not as much. I feel, yeah. It's moving in, in the places, opposite even direction. If it's not legal. A lot of places it's decriminalized to a way yeah. that, like. They're having to retrain dogs. Um, they're it's having to retrain dogs where they don't necessarily. Alert on the marijuana. Right. Where they don't necessarily hit on the marijuana, that it's other drug smells. Um, and then in some states, you can't even use marijuana as probable cause anymore. Yeah. But if you see drugs, if you see needles, yeah, if, if you, you see the baggies <laughs> and a scale, right? If you see the gun, then Put it in your glove compartment, guys. Right. I mean, you still can possibly I mean, have it searched if it's in your glove compartment. Right, if there's but, another way to search it, but don't keep it in plain view. We got a trunk and a exactly. glove compartment for a reason. Exactly. You, you at least eliminate probable area. <laughs> Right? Like none of those, because that's the officer safety thing is that if it is in like the reachable, grabbable area of 
Yes. This is, this is exactly it. So that's two specific things that are very particular is there's the search Mm -hmm. where if they have probable cause that any crime is, or, you know, evidence of a crime is afoot in your car, um, then yeah, they can search all of the areas of the car for which there may be evidence, except for the trunk, if it's a closed trunk. Um, so they can, they can get the glove box. They can get the center console. They can get the back seat, the driver's seat, the whole passenger compartment. Right. Anything that <laughs> might might be evidence there. But the then there's the arrest. So they can do the preliminary search based right. on your wingspan, which really isn't your wingspan because what I'm your like, arms I, are I, as wide as your car. That's what I was going to say. I could touch like all the parts of my car. But this is where we, we think of, I think of really speedy people because to me, you have to, if you're already out of the car, okay. Right. And they have the ability to search within your wingspan, then right. I got to be a super pe- fast person to, to be able to your detainment, <laughs> get into my car to get the thing I'm getting. So right. and clarify for me, cause I actually don't remember the answer to this. If it is not, they don't have any more probable cause. They've just pulled mm-hmm. you over for like, like swerving or whatever. Right. You're out of the car. They're talking to you. Obviously, they can still search your grabbable area, which yes. is silly because you're out of the car. But that does not include the like a locked glove compartment. Does that is it, that locked? is true. Now, if um, that is true, okay. the wingspan includes anything that's, quote, within the driver's reach, which is ridiculous because if you're out of the car, then can you really reach the back reach right anything? passenger right. side? Uh, but technically, it's anything that you can be speedy about and get to before an officer would be able to to destroy the evidence. Again, it's it feels so it improbable. Feel like, a, like a we're talking about Wild West a lot today, like a Wild West <laughs> duel, like whip them out. Like, <laughs> I'm diving into my car and grabbing this and eating it right. all before you can get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. But they can search, so they can search the car's passenger compartment. This is, now this is, okay. The mirror, no, I feel like maybe this is wrong. So, yeah, no, it's the car's closed trunk. They can search the passenger's compartment even in a closed container without a warrant. Um a probable cause, Yeah. But if there is a locked container or the trunk, which is also considered locked, right? If it's not one of those ones, now you can see everybody's trunk. Yeah. Um, But if it's technically locked, then you do need a warrant um, to get those or you'd have to um, impound it, et cetera. And if the other thing is if they move the driver away from the car, then it's no longer within their wingspan. Right. And you can't search it incident to arrest because you've put him somewhere else. But the, yeah. this whole term of if you search him incident to arrest and it's anything within his wingspan, that is truly anything he could open and get to technically very quickly if you're super speedy. Right. And so this <laughs> is the funny thing. It's like because all of these get confusing in combination because mm-hmm. usually it just means that they generally can probably search. Yes. But it's like. I think about the situations, it's like, okay, if you have not gotten out of the car, but say your door is open, you're pulled over, your door is open, and you're talking to the officer. Just based on that, Mm -hmm. the only thing he has suspicion of is is of you swerving. At that point, he still has the right to search the grabbable area. Yes. Correct. That's the protective sweep. The protective sweep. So what happens if you get pulled over swerving, they're talking to you, and then they see something in your backseat that gives them probable cause, they can now search everything. Yes. Except the trunk. Correct. Except for the trunk. Right. The locked trunk um, that's not open or visible. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yep. So there's like, yeah, I try to take it step by step because it can all get so convoluted with these like, very minor details. These yes. very minor details. Um, but then if they arrest you, you're out of the car and then they arrest you, then your car, call somebody, come pick it up. It gets towed to their lot. They can inventory it. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> there are so many ways around the search warrant requirement. But this is my favorite example, though. This is my favorite one. Okay, this tell is me on my final because I think it's so fascinating. They have to think there is evidence of the crime they are arresting you for in the car to be able to search Correct. It. So, for example, what's an easy crime that people commit in the car? Drunk driving. They're looking There's for no reason to suggest. Containers. But right, but for the most part, if they're like seeing you come from a bar in a downtown area, there's no reason to suggest that you would have evidence of your drunk driving in the car. So that be back at that restaurant. (laughs) Be back at the restaurant. So they can actually not search it then, in relation to the crime of drunk driving, which I think is really fascinating, and it helps me keep it clear of like what are the searches that they can do and when and why they have yeah. to be looking for evidence of a crime. Yeah. And so like drunk diving is a crime. They can absolutely arrest you for it, you know, search your person, but there's no reason to suggest there'd be evidence of drunk driving in the car. Exactly. And the same with, you know, lack of registration, um, driving on a suspended license. That is something you can ask them for. And if they don't produce it, well, then you can, you, know, you yeah. can ticket them for those those things, but it doesn't mean you can go into their glove box to look at it. They provided or or they didn't. So these are mostly drug related things because it's such, you know, interstate commerce is how much have we got We're close to Baltimore and the port where the interstates, yeah, the interstates are really flooded with, you know, there's the Mexican border, which it comes, you know, up through the border, but in our area, it comes from the ports and a lot of the I-81, I, the 66 and then 95 corridors, I-95 corridors are really heavy with huh. drug trafficking. Good so, to know. Yeah. Anyway, so that's basically the idea of they usually have to have a warrant to search you, but if you're in a car and you get pulled over, almost anything can be searched for a reason as long as the police officer can say it's for officer safety or they have probable cause to believe that you are committing a crime. Right. Good luck out there. Stay safe, guys. You know, keep <laughs> all of your illicit items in a locked container in your trunk. Then you really... Or don't put them in your car. True. Yeah. Yeah, true. just, I mean, you shouldn't be committing any crimes. I'm an attorney. I'm Please don't commit people. a crime. <laughs> I'm not advising. <laughs> but there is a simple, basic common sense of why would you drive around with it. Right. If you are. Anyway, so that's what we're going to leave you with today. Like or comment, um, like, subscribe, comment to our channel so that drop you can get topic ideas. Right, drop some co- topic ideas. You can get some ideas of what we have coming up next. We can show back up on your feed and get to others who might be interested in what we have to say. And we will catch you next time on the Law Unscripted. Bye.